Hi, everybody. My name is Aaron Shane. Welcome to Habitat Now. And it's my honor for you all to be here today to join me in celebrating 100 years of Stanislaw Fabinski. He was born, believe it or not, 100 years ago today. Talk about perfect timing for uh, a, a, a presentation. And I'm so grateful for you, everyone, for joining us, whether you're on uh, Facebook right now or you're watching this later via YouTube. We are grateful to have everybody here to join us and talk and share their memories of uh, Stanislav and obviously his uh, partner, Yaroslava, who just passed away uh, recently. So um, thank you. And this is gonna be a lot of fun. So um, without further ado, I'm gonna take over your screen. Let me uh, send out one more invitation to a late comer. Here we go. And I'm gonna start my little presentation here. And I'm looking forward to uh, sharing this, this very interactive slideshow that we've put together today. So let's click this over here and we are off and, oh, wrong button, and running. Okay, I'm gonna share my screen if I can get back to Zoom and voila. Okay, so you know this part already. Thank you for being here and we'll continue on to the next page. So we have an extra special guest today I learned about last night. Uh, the son of Stanislav and Yaroslava has joined us today. And I wanna thank him so much for coming and joining us and being part of the celebration of his father and his life and career. Uh, Yaroslav is here, so thank you for being here. Yaroslav, you're here. You're welcome to unmute yourself and say hello to everybody. Um, it's, it's an honor to have you uh, today. Just wave. Just uh, hello. Hello. <laughs> hello, hello. <laughs> Sorry, uh, it's difficult for my English for new program. No, no I, worries. I say hello for uh, all. <laughs> so many of you have met him in your travels and the family. So it's great to have him here and join us for a celebration. Actual family member. Uh, sorry, he's a nephew. So thank you so much. Um, and we'll start with the next slide now. So. Um, quick homework, uh, just be quick and jumping through these. We have the Kathy and Elliot show on display still. Um, you're welcome to see that. The week five is on display on artsy.com. So please check it out if you have yet to. It's an amazing collection of them. One of the most talented flame workers in the world. Glass 49, we're gearing up for that. Um, I, I'm super excited about that. And um, I'm gonna have a lot of help from the employees at Habitat while I'm away from baby time. Um, but there's a preview for the ACG members a couple of days before all virtual, all online. We are going to be celebrating in person, I promise you, on September 11th, 2021. So put that on your schedule. We're gonna have an event here at the gallery celebrating uh, 50 years of Habitat and our Glass International all at once. We have a mega masterworks auction on the books again. I know I've lied before and I apologize. <laughs> um, it's just tough to get these things up uh, myself, but I've worked on it and Ferd's helped me recently. And we're putting a plan together. It's going to be an amazing auction. Right now, we have about 72 pieces scheduled. So uh, keep your date open for that day, which is a Friday. So we will begin. And I'm going to read my little speech here. Um, a little bit about the artist and his career for those that you know or don't know, just to start the story here. A uh, little bit of background from 1912 to 1914. There was an important Cubist movement in the Czech Republic. This movement ranked as important as the movement in Paris, France. Uh, this movement was powerful and continued over generations with artists creating Cubist work. Uh, recently, I read a quote um, that Stanislav Levinsky was essentially a painter. With his wife and partner, Yaroslava Braktova, uh, Stanislav created a, a legacy of work, publications, installations, inspirations, memories, and beyond. So it's quite uh, an amazing uh, person to be talking about and sharing today, someone so important in our community and in the world. Um, I obviously invite you to join me and share your stories and images by the artist and the works you've created, celebrating the 100th year of his birth. Together with Yaroslava, they, beca they became legends during their lifetimes. Uh, recently, a five-episode limited series podcast was produced with interviews by S Sylvia Petrova, who is the curator of the Museum of Applied Arts in Prague. Uh, these were produced to commemorate the memory of Stanislav Lubinsky on his birthday. Um, 
So, but the series was only produced in the Czech language uh, by uh, someone named Teresa Lakova. So if you were bilingual, I would love for you to listen to this presentation and translate it for the rest of us. I'd love to give you the link and because uh, it sounds extremely, uh, it sounds very interesting. And I'm sure all of us will learn a lot. Uh, Stanislav Babinski was a son of a blacksmith, a gifted pupil, and an unforgettable teacher who realized his thinking in glass. A hundred years since his birth and 19 years after his death, the work, which was created with close collaboration with Yaroslava Braktova, is an original and open statement. The reports about the world that Lubinsky and Braktova left us are noble, plastic, and melted in the exclusive material of glass. It is through the work of this couple that the story of Czech glass is written into this history of fine arts, which is based on free expression and con uh, con contradicts well-known proven methods. Uh, the collaborating artists modified and created technology of casting glass into large scale, cr scale creations in architecture, if I can skip a screen here, um, uh, which gained the world's attention. Even today, they, they accomplished what is yet to be matched. So that was a, a, an amazing thing that I, I read recently. I wanted to share it with you all. So starting off this little presentation, um, let's kick through some examples of this masterwork that I had you know, when I was digging around online by the artists. And many of you have seen this particular piece. This is at the Corning Museum of Glass. And I went there last for the gas conference, which feels like a lifetime ago. Um, but they have such an amazing display. If you have not seen Lubinsky's work at the Corning Museum of Glass, you really uh, need to go because it is an impressive display by far. And then they also have one of these pieces, uh, the headpiece, a really well-known form of the, of the work. And one of the early pieces, I think this dates back to the 50s, right, Ferd? 1959. Yeah, 1959. So I've, I've seen this work in different colors. I believe I've seen it in red and now green. And what other colors have you seen in for just to get an idea how the artist works? Uh, there's been like a lime color that he mm -hmm. did, uh, did it in. Um, the one that seems the most dominant is the red, the yeah. red, red head. Right, right. In fact, in, sometimes in the name, they call it the halaba, which means head. And um, the, the Czech term red, red head. So. Right. I've seen a couple different works all titled halaba by uh, Lubinsky, and they're all very impressive. Um, some great mm -hmm. photos of, uh, of the man himself from the years. You know, it's always interesting to see how people change. I used to love watching images of Harvey Littleton as he passed through time, because for me, it was all towards the end. So it was great to see. And then just a sample of some architecture um, by the artist as well while I was digging around. I, I found this as well. It's amazing the legacy they've created in their lifetime there. And uh, I'm sure, you know, those of you had, who had met Stanislav and Yaroslava, uh, whether they were young or old, it's, it's a, it must have been an amazing experience. To and, and I heard from Hal Weiss, he constantly said per perfecto, right? Is that what he <laughs> would constantly say when he was talking about uh, different topics? So Fantastic. Fantastico, that's what it is. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank, Thank you for correcting me. I appreciate it. Uh, now, there's some great works, you know, by the artist. This, was, this is in the Flint Institute of Arts. Um, from the late Shirley and Sherwin Glass collection. Another piece that is here in Flint, come see it live in person. Uh, monumental work uh, by the artist. And some more fun uh, images. It's nice to see they have a, a great little collection of images. I'm sure we'll see some more as we go through the presentation. A couple of samples just to the Habitat Archive of works that we have, have passed through the gallery. It's, I have an amazing collection of photos in my computer I swear my computer is its own museum from the, <laughs> from the time I've worked at the gallery, just going through the archives. It's just such amazing things that I've seen or, or have actually held in my hands. And you'll see some pieces later on, but I'm, these photographs really uh, are sharing a thousand words. And it's an important part of the history of the artist, whether I had the photographs or I get them from somewhere else, or you have them photographed in your own home and we'll be sharing those later. Right. So, Starting off, uh, and I don't know if Tom is here, I got a couple of images from Tom Stokes, who many of you know, who uh, so I've talked to some people recently, they know them. He shared an image of uh, Dudley Anderson um, with Colin McKinnon at the Lubinsky-Brektova Museum, um, which was a fun one to share. Look at those 
monumental works in the background. Can't even imagine. I do a lot of setup in my life and I can't even imagine what went into setting those up. Uh, and uh, they are masterpieces. And he also sent in this great picture of, of a Dudley with Yaroslava in 2017. It's great that we have such, this community is so amazing to be so close to so many artists, old or young, you know, uh, all, all working together and, and sharing in this world. Um, Peter Silka contacted me. Many of you may know him. He worked with um, uh, Ferd back in the day and, and Lubinsky's offering work. Maybe Ferd can give us a little background on Peter, if you don't mind. Uh, he, he worked at uh, Art Centrum, which was a communist arm uh, that distributed work uh, throughout the country. And uh, Silka was a uh, uh, one of the younger members of the firm, but he was really the first one that I started communicating with uh, when, uh, of course, Czechoslovakia was communist. Yeah, and I had some communication with him when I first started the gallery, and then I don't know, but it's great to hear from him I and mean, that he's still around, still kicking, and still cares. He wanted to share a rare piece by the artist of a zoomorphic series. Yeah. Um, an early work, very beautiful in color, and he was excited to hear about this presentation because you don't hear about a Levinsky presentation of this kind of uh, celebration of 100 years ever in a, in a long time. So he jumped in and show, wrote and he said that I would like to share with you the images of a rare piece called Zoomorphic Stone series, originally designed by Levinsky Brichtova in 1957-58 for the Expo, Expo's 58 World Exhibition. It's yeah, that was in Brussels. And um, that really was the first time the world saw what could be done with glass uh, by the Lubinskys. They won an award and it was a, a very exciting time because it was the buzz of the show. Yeah, that's great. See, well, that's, that's, an, and that's amazing to hear because I didn't know that either. Um, these four cast glass stones out of originally 19 with animal themes, goat, antelope, owl, and fishes mount into a metal frame, 180 inches tall, and he wanted to share, share this with everybody here. And then he said there was a, a picture out of a book he also sent me of something similar um, in Helmut Rick's, Helmut Rick's book, Czech Glass, Helmut, 1945 yeah. to 1980. And he, he enriches us a dignified and respectable celebration. Um, Fur, do you have a memory you can share right now of Lubinsky? I know you got a couple lined up. Mm -hmm. um, well, yeah, I wanted to uh, touch upon the political climate and how it affected things at the time. Uh, the, uh, the professor uh, uh, was an important figure, just being a professor. And so consequently, a lot of, um, they, they really would like to have him in the Communist Party, which he never did join. And that created problems for them uh, because the government gave commissions away but they were so important and so good that they still got their share of commissions. One commission was in Osaka, Japan in 1969-1970, and it was called the River of Life, and it was 80 feet long, uh, and it was part of a, a, an expo there. And it was uh, well received until months later somebody noticed that there were boots walking through the river of life. And actually it corresponded with the time when communism became part of the Czech, uh, of Czechoslovakia. And that of course was another doghouse situation for the, for the uh, Lubinskys. Mm -hmm. uh, Yaroslava told me that for two years there was a car parked in front of their house that would always follow them when, wherever they traveled. And she would sometimes bring them donuts and, and coffee. Uh, so it, it was a uh, situation kind of love-hate. The, the, uh, the communist government loved the prestige that the Lubinskys brought, but really didn't uh, like that they were not good party members. Hmm. Good to know. I think it's fascinating that uh, we're talking 1958, 1959, 1960. I mean, this early period of time where I don't know how many artists were, were working, were, were casting glass. 
We know of a lot of blowers. We know of a lot of people lamp working. Brichta, um, uh, Yaroslav's father was a lamp worker, but we don't know how many artists have exactly uh, worked with the material in terms of casting it to express their ideas. Now, you know, casting glass is dated back you know, hundreds, maybe even a thousand years or so during Mesopotamian times. But what we don't realize is how many artists have expressed themselves using the material. So I find this really early body of uh, work fascinating. Yeah, that's great, Corey. Thanks for jumping in. Yeah. All right, next we'll be talking to artist Steve Lynn. Steve, are you around? You did a, uh, a wonderful commission. I'd love for you to la elaborate on it. Yeah, I just, uh, just wanted to mention that the river of life, the whereabouts, is is never been uh, found since the since that e exhibit in in Japan. Hmm. Seems to have been lost or destroyed. Huh. Interesting. Hmm. All right. Thank you, Harold. Hal, Steve, are you around? I know I saw you. There you I are. Am. Great. Okay. Great. I'm here. Here is. I'll um, start with a detailed shot. Feel free to. to okay. Talk. Well. This was a commission that I did for Hal and Myra Weiss. In, uh, it began from my exhibition at the Birmingham Habitat Gallery in 2003, where they first saw my work. And um, they asked me to do a commission for about uh, Stanislaw in Yaroslava. And um, it was a, a great honor for me to be asked to do this. And I eventually went to their house and looked at the collection that they had. And I noticed that there was a piece called The Bird. And The Bird was one of the pieces that they had, which was a unique piece. Most of the pieces that the Lubinskys did were in multiples, but this was a unique piece. And it was also a piece that was made up of uh, five or six elements. So it wasn't just one solid, solid casting and that uh, attracted me. So um, <clears throat> I, I decided my first uh, uh, idea was uh, not, very, uh, not very good. And um, through uh, lengthy discussions with Hal and Myra, they, they put me on the right track of where my work and the Lubinsky's work would join. And um, the idea was to um, start off with drawing, which was where the Lubinsky's started, and then um, move on to the, to the clay and the three-dimensional work. And um, I proposed to them that they allow me to uh, draw on their wall which um, I was grateful that they allowed that to happen. <laughs> and a lot of people would just say, come on, you know, no, no way. But um, they allowed me to do that. And I, I tried to bring into the element, the sculpture, the elements where in the Yaroslava section, she's got clay tools and she's working on the body of the work. And in the uh, Stanislaw section, he's actually drawing. And also with the wood dividers, it deals with the, se the segmenting of that particular piece. And um, I, I must say that uh, in my entire career, this was the most enjoyable commission that I ever did. Thank you, Steve, for, for sharing with us. I appreciate it. It was a lot of fun to see this every day when I go over the Weiss's home. Um, yeah. Aaron, yeah. I'd just like to add that sure. the that this particular commission, I think, shows what an unbelievable artist Steve is. Because all the drawing on the wall, the charcoal drawing, he did himself. So he's not only, he's, he's not only a, a more than capable a graphic artist. Uh, there's cast glass, there's sandblasted glass, uh, there's, um, there's molded metal and there's wood. And, you know, I think that it, it exhibits a, a degree of uh, virtuosity that is exceptional. Hmm. Gotcha. Thank yeah, you very much. definitely. Thank you guys. All right, next we're rolling to uh, Vicky and uh, 
I spelled her name wrong, but <laughs> would you guys join me? Please unmute yourselves. I won't announce the name. Vicky, you there? I saw you there. Can I, I, sorry, I muted you. Would you unmute yourselves again? I just saw you a second ago. Where'd you go, guys? There we are. There oh, you are. Thank God. you guys for joining me. Introduce yourselves, please, and I'll show your piece. First picture. Hey. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> <laughs> We've changed. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, we're Vic and Kathleen. It's nice to see you. And that's the piece we own behind Vic. Yeah. You can't hardly well, see it. But. Just on a personal level, when I first saw Stanislav, I said, this guy, he's like my uncle. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I just <laughs> connected with him immediately. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> that was kind of funny. He, he really just, uh, the connection just radiated. I, I, I just loved it. Just uh, real experience, just on a personal level. Some that's John Wood on the right. I don't know if he's on or not. And it's kind of an interesting picture because some people take it seriously. It's not a serious picture. It's a picture that says we all look alike. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any hair? We wear glasses. <laughs> And, uh, I, I have the picture in the house. I look at it often, and uh, every once in a while I say hello. And uh, great experience. And uh, I, oh, <laughs> there's another world in which is kind of interesting. We were in um, Washington, the state of Washington, and uh, we went to the, the winery, Chateau Michel, and I saw a picture of this case of wine. It was to the Lubinsky, it was a celebrating artist series. Now they've done other artists as well. And uh, I thought, hey, he's arrived. I mean, it's like Andy Warhol, pop, <laughs> <laughs> on a wine bottle. <laughs> and uh, by the way, the wine is delicious. There's no more left. I have the case, I have the empty bottles. And I was hoping someday to invite him over to the house and I was going to put some real good French wine in, in just in case he, <laughs> <laughs> he had a chance to sample it. And uh, it's another piece of his world, I guess, in her world, uh, Jeff Sloan's world. Yeah, and this is yeah. this is the piece photographed. It's a beauty. Yeah. yeah. Thank you, guys. That was purchased in 1983 at the uh, first Lubinsky exhibition which just so happened to be at Habitat Galleries. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you know, it's interesting. Uh, Yaroslav will appreciate this. Uh, I went through the exhibition and one thing, uh, the professor didn't speak English, but Yaroslav spoke English, uh, not a lot at that point. But uh, she said, you know, we made 13 pieces. And I said, oh, that's a good size exhibition. That's very nice. I, I love she said, no, no, we made 13 pieces that uh, for pedestals. I said, oh, yeah, well, they're all put on pedestals. That's great. She said, no, no. Uh, in our lifetime, we've made 13 <laughs> pieces for, for pedestals. pedestals. <laughs> so that exhibition was very early on. And... Uh, one piece I walked up to was like my favorite piece in the show. And I said, Yaroslava, this, this is my favorite piece. She said, well, thank you. I designed that myself. <laughs> and because everyone always thought that she was the clay modeler. And years and years later, 1992, uh, Kathy and I climbed pyramids in Mexico with Yaroslava. And she ended up... Um, eight months later coming out with the green eye of the pyramid mm. and so you know that she was a tremendous artistic influence also oh yep. yeah that's that's definitely a great point thank you ferg i i got a question maybe for stanislav's son okay i had asked for an autograph at that show and this is this is what i got <laughs> i have the slightest idea I hope it's not something like you Americans or <laughs> does anyone know what that says? <laughs> I got it as close as I can. Maybe it's backwards. Yeah. 
Oh, maybe it's backwards because we're showing it on the camera. Oh, right. It could be the case. They flip it back and forth. Backwards. Or it's the name. Not sure, but I love it. I think I think it I think it's good enough. <laughs> it's a signature. I think so. Yeah. Can you can you show us the picture, please? Hold Once it up more. again, Vic. It's the signature, huh? Yes, it's signature. Stanislav no, and Brichtova. No, Stanislav Libensky. Oh, Stanislav Libensky. <laughs> Thank you so much. <laughs> now I know. I'm in four. That's how old we are. It's not a signature. That's great. Well, I'm glad you came, Vic. Now you okay. feel better. <laughs> That's great. All, all, all of these uh, images in this slideshow were provided by, you know, the guests that are talking. So we're happy to have images and to share with you guys today. And we came to Ferd and Kathy Hampson, who have great memories of, uh, of the artist. I said, Kathy, my mom sent me these photos to share of the uh, spending time with the artists over the years. Um, you guys are welcome to share some more memories or tell us about your experiences. Well, I'll tell you one fun story. Uh, we uh, took a collector group to uh, the Czech Republic and we were going to the Lubinskys. Everyone was so excited, all 44 people on the bus. So as we headed out there, uh, I understood we had four pieces that we could sell. Well, I'm starting to sweat bullets. I mean, I've got 20 something people that want to buy a piece. And there's four available. So I'm thinking, ah, do we do an auction? What do we do? You know, like we came up with this idea of putting credit cards in, a, in the professor's hat and drawing credit cards out. A lottery, yes. <laughs> yeah, it's a lottery. And um, ultimately, four people uh, won and got their pieces. And years later, we did it again. But Kathy's got a fun story. Well, one couple who weren't very familiar with the Lipinskis, they happened to draw their credit card. <laughs> and they didn't quite know what that meant. But they, at that time, it was a lot of money. Well, of course. $25,000. $25,000. And so uh, when we said goodbye to the Lipinskis, uh, she was, the wife was boarding the bus and she looked like a deer in headlights. And I said to her, you know, if you don't want this piece, don't feel pressure. We'll take it to the gallery and we'll, we'll deal with it. And she was very relieved that she had that option. And fortunately, she didn't take, uh, take us up on it because she was very grateful later yeah. on. That's so funny. Yeah, I was like, oh, that where it came from, huh? That makes sense. No, this is uh, Yaroslav and I peeking through one of her pieces. I thought that was a cute shot. <laughs> Definitely. And then this is the, uh, Ferdu, tell us about this. This is the lamp working you talked about earlier. Well, this is um, Yaroslava's father. Uh, well, Yaroslav's uh, <laughs> grandfather, Yaroslava's father. Uh -huh. And uh, he uh, was a professor, and actually Stanislav took over his position and uh, became the uh, professor after him. But he was involved in making glass, and that was like a difficult type of piece that he would create. Uh -huh. I saw uh, Yaroslava, Yaroslav uh, Brichta's exhibition when I was in the Czech Republic about two years ago, and there was about over 200 works and uh, really spectacular um, uh, lamp working that, that you know, probably would, would challenge what is even being made today. Now, I think it's a, a kind of important, and I want to uh, uh, mention again and a little bit about what Ferg was saying. Uh, I know we're celebrating Stanislav Lubinsky, but Yaroslava Brichtova, his wife, was equally, if not more important and is significant for making all of the works that were produced by the Lubinsky duo. I'm telling you, she was unbelievably important. She designed the work, she had the idea behind the work. Um, she was extremely influential. So, you know, when we say Lubinsky, don't just think Lubinsky, say Lubinsky Brichtova because they were two the team. in the same. Yes. Yep. I completely agree. Yeah. That's, that's how it goes. All right, so uh, Norm and Arlene Silvers, are you guys here? I know you sent some uh, really great pictures of your uh, collection uh, 
uh, Libinsky's works. But if you don't, luckily you gave me this comment to read. So I will uh, read it for and show the images uh, that are coming next. So they have a collection of Libinsky Brechtovist sculptures. Um, <laughs> to us, they show all that all glass is meant to be strong, have the be str have strength, color, shape, and light. Each piece depicts these four attributes. It is amazing how they all differ. We have been collecting their work for many years. Uh, our first piece was the green eye of the, yeah, the pyramid, the square behind. We went to visit them and bought an eight foot high piece. You guys will see soon. It is a wonder. It was wonderful to meet them. We've kept touch over the years, and our oldest piece is a vase created by Lebensky alone. So this is their. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, I saw. I see you guys. Are you guys around. You're welcome to take over from me if you want to. Well, it seems like you guys are on mute. Um, beautiful uh, presentation they have in their house of of the works, and I can't seem to unmute you guys. So if you're welcome to unmute you guys, that come back at your leisure. And I took. Uh, they took some detailed shots. Of, of their displays in front of these beautiful windows in their home and are just absolutely stunning. And you can see they, I mean, their, their pink piece is to die for, <laughs> you know, just beautiful, beautiful works. And then they have their large scale piece they were talking about earlier, wow. which is in their living room. You can see a detail on the left of, of that piece as well. What a beauty and a rare one. I've never seen one like that in my mm -hmm. lifetime. So um, a, a great treasure they enjoy every day. And if they come back to the meeting, I'll definitely let them speak anytime just to jump in. If you see them, let me know. Um, this is the green eye of the pyramid with a square in the back they were talking about. A very iconic piece by the artist, as many of you know. And uh, I'm, I'm sure that's a true treasure. And uh, I hope uh, they had someone put it in place because it looks heavy for sure. <laughs> all right. Um, all right, next. Oh, this is the Lebinsky they were talking about uh, that Stanislav made alone part of their collection. Um, I saw a couple of these doing my research before this talk, a different scale and size, and I, I don't know when uh, this work was made, but it was definitely an interesting piece to see. Um, a powerful, you know, narrative yeah, and, mm -hmm. and a great uh, example of this body of work. You'll see some more later on of some blown pieces that Lebinsky did as well. Um, they didn't have really amazing casting facilities in America when he'd come over to Pilchuck to try to teach. So he'd blow something and, you know, do something with glass to, to entertain. And those pieces were end up being sold for uh, charity to raise funds for the schools and whatnot. Uh, Hale and Myra, you guys are here. Hale uh, and Myra, of course, are uh, my experts. <laughs> Got some feedback here. There it goes away. Um, are my local experts here in uh, the area. So I'll let them uh, share some of their thoughts and their lifetime because they've known Levinsky since he was born, right, guys? <laughs> Before. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So we, we, we fell in love with their work uh, many years ago uh, thanks, to, thanks to Ferd and Habitat Galleries. And uh, the first time we saw it, we, we were pretty, pretty well sold on it. Uh, we have been traveling to the Czech Republic uh, yearly for the past 15 years, visiting initially both with Stanislav and Yaroslava and subsequently just with Yaroslava after Stanislav passed away. And we have you know, collected their work uh, actively over the years. Um, so, um, this is my favorite picture of the two of them. Um, I think it's a really sweet, uh, uh, really sweet picture. I love the hat. This was <laughs> in their home, uh, when the first trip we took with Ferd and Kathy, um, and it, it was just sharing their warmth uh, with humor. Uh, we were all relaxed and we had a wonderful visit. Yeah, Stanislav spoke very little English. Yaroslav uh, understood. Understood I... and spoke a little bit, but I think she understood more. But and nevertheless, we always had somebody who was uh, fluent um, in, in Czech to uh, facilitate conversation. Uh, this is a picture uh, when Yaroslav uh, presented us with uh, the head bowl. Which was their which was their first uh, collaborative piece, 
uh, the very first piece that, that, that really started their collaborative career. And, and I think that the story was that she saw a photo, a, a, a drawing of the piece that he, and, that he had made. And she said to him, you know, Stanislav, I think we can make that. And, uh, and that's it. So there are, I think there are four, four five, copies, five. four copies of that, uh, that maybe more, maybe five. Yeah. I know that Dudley has one and I know that, uh, yeah. The museum yeah. in Prague. Yeah. So this was a, this is a picture taking, taken in Luxembourg at, uh, at a wonderful exhibition. It was, it was a posthumous exhibition, uh, but, but the setting was absolutely spectacular because of the light uh, in this, um, cloister. Word, in this cloister, yeah. He had a, a great relationship with them. It's great we to see it being so close yeah. relationship, mm -hmm. especially with her. Uh, since we visited her every year uh, after he was gone, um, and we would sit in her in their dining room. Yarda would always be there. Um, usually, Yitka took us at that point. She was our guide, uh, and she would be our translator. And what I loved is we would ask. Yaroslava questions and she would respond in Czech and after five minutes the translation would come back to us as yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's funny. There's Yarda and his daughter Veronica at the Luxembourg exhibit. exhibit yeah. yeah. And we had the joy of being with the professor in Yaroslava in New York in Venice in Michigan. Yeah, uh, this is Venice. Yeah, this was at the '96 uh, uh, Aperto. Mm -hmm. yeah. And there's a great story. Yeah, so yeah. <laughs> we 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 were walking around with Ferd, and as we left the Doge's Palace, there was the architectural size uh, uh, green eye of the pyramid, and I said to Ferd, I said, "Do you think that's available?" And Ferd said, oh, "I don't know. I think it might be. A, it might be a, a, you know, a prize of the of the Czech Republic. But I'll ask." So this is so, the night we were all together at a palazzo in Venice, mm -hmm. and um, Ferd addressed the professor, and, and yeah, and said. Uh, you know, the Weisses are interested in the green eye of the pyramid. Is it available? And he conferred with Yaroslava and he said, yes, it is. Um, and told us uh, how much they wanted for us, for it. And I drank a couple of more glasses of champagne. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, and then immediately after, the, and we, we, after we, that, we, we, said, we, we, we told, we said to yes and toasted. Yeah, and then immediately after that, Dan Klein comes running over and says, "Professor, I have a client who wants to buy the Green Eye of the Pyramid." <laughs> and he said, oh, "I'm sorry, it's already spoken for." Oh, so, it was that timing. Close. Yeah, it was, that was that was close. So we we yeah. were. were we're glad. I mean, it's it's not a unique piece, obviously, but we're we're glad that we have a piece that has a very a good provenance from that uh, aperto in Venice. And as Hal likes to say, I looked at him. I said, "Where are we going to put that?" <laughs> and and I looked, and I looked at her and I said, "How are we going to pay for it?" <laughs> 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 so this is, uh, yeah, this is us in Venice with no, Ferd, no, no, in, in their home. In their home, sorry, in, in, in the Czech Republic Ferd with Ferd and Kathy. Kathy. Or is that Ferd and is that is that Ferd, is that your son and Kathy? Is that your daughter? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's, that's so funny. We gotta get we gotta get Corey to grow that mustache, right, Corey? <laughs> how are you? How old are you in that picture? Would you say? I think I'm like your dad. <laughs> look like if you look behind us, you'll see some hanging, actually, mm -hmm. chandelier pieces 
or lighting fixture pieces, which they had made and hung in their living room. Yeah, so it, it's amazing. They, they, did, uh, they did a series of chandeliers for a nearby hotel that was hanging, that they subsequently reclaimed. But they did a lot of unbelievable architectural work, yeah. uh, as well as uh, as well as individual sculptures. This is a picture of Stanislav in our home. Uh, obviously, very happy that uh, we gave we, him a drink. <laughs> yeah, he loved, he loved to drink, and and uh, yeah. So uh, this, this is, is this our is, first this, piece. That was our first piece, the Arcus one. And this is with us in front of, uh, in our home, in front of triangle and a triangle. That's great. That's great that he's been to your home yeah, and seeing and your collection grow. Like my son and Myra's daughter, right? <laughs> yeah. So this is us in, uh, with Stanislav in, in his studio with uh, Horizon. <laughs> Some other fun shots, you guys have some great memories. Yeah. I'm grateful to have you guys here to, to show, you know, where with your times with both of these incredible people. Um, well, thank you for, uh, for that. If you guys have anything else to add or just thank you overall. I wanted to, uh, um, yeah, sure. can I ask Cal and Myra a question? Yeah, absolutely. So guys, the first time you saw the work, I mean, what, what did it trigger? How did you feel? What did, it was like, well, oh, wow, yeah, <laughs> what, was, what is this? We yeah. have never seen any huge architectural pieces yeah. in glass. We always loved sculpture. Yeah, yeah but we, we yeah, the, 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 that first piece that we saw, which was Arcus that we fell in love with, uh, Ferd had said, you know, this actually was a commission uh, for, I think, some folks in Ann Arbor. Mm -hmm. yeah. said, but uh, it's a possibility that they won't want it because they asked for it to be in blue and it's actually, it looks like it's orange there, yeah, but it's, right. it's not, it's really, it's really gray. Uh, uh, he said, if for any reason they don't want it, uh, I'll give you a call. And whatever, yeah, we, they, didn't, later. they didn't yeah. want it hmm. because they wanted a blue thing. Yeah, these people, they actually painted their entire room, decorated it with blue furniture and okay. waited for the piece. <laughs> oh my God. And then it came in gray. <laughs> What's interesting about the gray color is I, I just read a, read a passage that Robert Kalman wrote in his book uh, regarding the Levinsky's. I think it's called Inner Space, Inner Circle, um, that... that he wanted to make work. They wanted to make work in gray because they, they were minimalists. They felt like they were working with stone. And, uh, but as time went on, all these other colors became available and became quite popular with collectors. So they started making uh, various colored works. But if it was up to them, they would have stuck with, with gray. You know, I have a great memory of, of uh, one of Stanislav's great quotes. People would constantly up, go up to him and say, we love your piece. We have it at our home, but we can't light it well at night. What, what can we do? And he looked at them and he said, that's the time that the sculpture is sleeping. <laughs> <laughs> that's funny. I, I use that from now on. People call me. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <Yeah. laughs> so funny well um um i would like to invite you know, yaroslav to say hello or to, if he has any comments i know his limited ability to have a dialogue with us but i want to thank him for being here i also want to thank uh, uh stanislav nep nephew peter for showing up today both uh, involved in the family business and we're grateful to have you both in celebrating your uh, your relatives 100th birthday may we all live this long and be as happy just would like to add one thing, Aaron. Sure. Um, after the professor had, had passed, <clears throat> Yaroslava, with Yarda's help, worked on opening a museum in Zelezny Broad. And it is a fantastic, fantastic uh, tribute to the both of them um, with many pieces on exhibit and uh, photographs. And if anyone is going to Prague once it opens, 
I would certainly recommend a visit to the Lesney Broad. Yeah, in, in addition to in addition to their uh, their personal museum in Zelezny Broad, the in the town square uh, as Zelezny Broad, there's and has been for many years uh, a museum, the the second floor of which is devoted to their work, and there's there are wonderful uh, wonderful people, wonderful drawings in that as well. So there are two locations. The Lesney are definitely. Thank you guys for uh, for mentioning that for sure. I'm getting some feedback here, so I did a little bit of muting. So um, I uh, would love to go someday myself, someday in the future, post baby. So um, let's continue on. We got some memories. So Corey took a trip to uh, Prague not too long ago, right, Corey? You were there hanging out with. Uh, with yeah, that. yeah. Um, oh my gosh! Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, we did. Uh, Yaroslav was. Um, uh, we visited a few times um, and got a chance to walk around. And this is that um, place in uh, Zelensky Broad that um, that we were speaking about. Not the town square, but uh, the uh, the museum that's set up, which is you know, some of the works in there are unbelievably large and I've never really seen the, the size, the stack elements. Look at that, I think that's, is that a circle in a sphere? Uh, unbelievable piece. And I believe the piece behind me was made, um, a, a student of Stanislav and Yaroslava created that um, for Stanislav. And uh, look in the background, some of the architectural uh, uh, visions that they had that they had produced and then below is the drawings but here we're with uh, uh, Trish from the Imagine Museum um, which was really uh, uh, honored to meet Yaroslav and and be there with Lukas Hora, Lukas Hora and we you know just had a really wonderful time every experience we've had look at this in front of the green eye of the pyramid you know the one that's in front of the you know at the Weiss's house uh if you ever had a chance to see that wonderful collection and of Lubinsky's you should go and uh, make an appointment and see if you can come through during the international and there she is Yaroslava um she uh, at this moment uh was really interesting because there were long pauses um and we didn't really know uh if she was and what she was doing was trying to take it all in and thinking about what she was going to say and was very careful of what she said. And this was an interview that we did. And she said um, she was very, very happy and um, filled with, with uh, overall happiness. And at the time, it was so emotional. Um, God, I look like a, such a dork. Look at me. What am I doing? But they both started to cry. It was an unbelievably emotional time for them because... Uh, Trish was telling her about the museum and how how important of an artist Yaroslava has meant to uh, Studio Glass and really just her vision. Look at in front of the Green Eye of the Pyramid, um, that, that piece that that um, for again mentioned uh, as he walked above you know the top of the pyramid with Lillian and, and Yaroslava. But you know it was just an emotional time um, that that was caught, <laughs> and uh, I'm just glad to be it. I was I was part of it. That's great, Corey. Thanks for sharing. And you don't look, you look great, buddy. You look great. <laughs> so uh, Charles Shepard recently uh, from the Fort Wayne Museum of Art is on the call. They recently received a, or acquired a piece um, from uh, Charlie and Sandy Hall, al along with some of the donation pieces, a Thurman Statum, a Stephen D. Edwards, and a Berta Valine. And this is the piece, a taking off sculpture that is now part of the Fort Wayne Museum of Art's permanent collection. And if Charles is on the call, I would love for you to come up and talk to us about it. I know I saw you. There you are. Welcome. I'm here, Aaron. I'm here, and it's a wonderful piece. Charles, Charlie and Sandy uh, were in Michigan, and they moved to Fort Wayne. Both had grown up here, and they returned and installed uh, a marvelous, their marvelous collection in their home. This piece, though, was at Habitat. I think you were helping them out by keeping it for them, and you Keep were helping warm. me out the Habitat team suggested that he loan it to us because he didn't have any more room in his house. So we gladly accepted that loan. And my theory was that he wasn't gonna make any more room in his house. And eventually 
he'd want to give this to us or sell this to us. And it turned out to be a month ago. He said, you got to keep this sculpture. And That's I thought great. happily I could keep that sculpture. <laughs> do you love when a plan comes together? And that's <laughs> yes, I do. And, and I love it with the help of the Habitat team because that's how a lot of my plans come together. <laughs> <laughs> We're happy to have you guys in our family along with everybody. Like I mentioned a quick thing about this sculpture called Taking Off. A lot of the um, work by Yaroslava and Lubinsky were about uh, uh, post and pre Velvet Revolution. And uh, Taking Off represents a bird. And if you can see that the bird is there, but it's too, too heavy to fly. So it's just right there about to take off but it's still kind of on the ground and, and difficult to take off. And I, when I look at it, I think of the, the, the government um, during that particular period of time, um, post Velvet Revolution. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a beautiful piece, very substantial pyramid with the back legs, um, a wonderful work and enjoy it, Charles. I know you will. And hi, what's your name? <laughs> it's Louisa. <laughs> He's hi, getting Louisa. so big. Yeah, oh, she is. Wow. Yeah. So thank you for joining <laughs> us and discussing it. Um, I got an anonymous uh, picture to show, just a very fun, small piece. I've never seen one like this before, a tea, a uh, beautiful sculpture out of clear glass. Um, John and Annette, Annette Zwerner are Ooh. collectors that uh, collected from Habitat back in the day and uh, sent some images to share. And I don't know if they should be on the call. If you are, feel free to unmute yourself. If not, I will speak for you and show some of the photos. Uh, the beautiful uh, crosshead, mm, they're yeah. inches tall, beautiful red tone and color. We have professional images of this piece too. It's a, a beauty and they sent it in, in its natural habitat in their home. Uh, very substantial work. I've seen a couple of these in my day. I love the, the red. I think I've only seen them in red. Is that about right, Fred? Have you seen them in other colors? Uh, no, I've only seen this in red. I've this seen... actual piece was a part of a uh, major exhibition in China uh, that went to the uh, Millennium Museum and the Shanghai Museum of Fine Art. And uh, when the show came back, they acquired that piece from us. Uh -huh. I, I have seen one that's in black and gray um, in Luxembourg. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's nice to, to share and know. Beautiful work. Another one, a, a, a light space piece. Looks like maybe it's a gray or a blue. They sent a second picture of it as well. Um, wide, beautiful work, um, powerful, and I'm sure it's quite heavy. And a, a beautiful space is one. And I can't quite tell if it's an amber or a gray, but a, um, a wonderful, a wonderful work by the artist. Um, so some other examples that are possibly going to be available in the near future. I just want to show some pieces that we have put our feelers out there for people who are looking to sell their collection or pieces that we know are going to be available soon. Some things you may have seen before in one of my other Zooms, but I wanted to just show some pieces because it's a very interesting time if you're looking for a very substantial work by Stanislav Lubinsky and Yaroslav Baktova. Um, don't know the specifics yet on a lot of these, but I just wanted to share some beautiful images because if anything catches your eye, you can always contact me at the gallery or Corey or Ferg because there's some uh, impressive things that may trickle down, as we say in the business. Cube in a cube, uh, a sphere in a cube, mm -hmm. uh, masterpieces um, by far. I've, I've seen this in, I think Horning has one maybe, uh, maybe Toledo has something similar. I think we have the, the sphere in the cylinder, but just some rare, rare pieces. And if you guys have seen these or want to share stories about them, just stop me anytime. Um, this is a, a work we have in the gallery, our maquette piece called Halava. This was a different Halava piece for what I mentioned earlier, similar name, different work, beautiful. Yeah. It's uh, made with that uh, saffron glass that uh, changes color. It starts in this muted brown, almost like plum-like color, and then with light, uh, it, it changes. It's really quite uh, dynamic. That color uh, was used in the Czech Republic a few times, I know. Uh, the Rybacks have used it. Um, a, a lot of artists that, that had access to that color would use that color when they could. It's become unbelievably rare um, at this point. Um, it was actually uh, made for the jewelry industry and artists uh, got a hold of it. <laughs> oh, interesting. Yeah, we had a pieces that, piece that was called Spaces, a small maquette that sold. And this is the other one left from the uh, Michael and Annie Belkin collection. 
uh, another spaces piece. This one looks like it has more of a blue tone, beautiful, uh, powerful work. And um, yeah, I, I, just, I just love this stuff. Um, here we go, Penetration Through a Cone. This is from a local collection that is now available in the secondary market. Extremely substantial. Uh, and uh, yeah, it's it, great tones, masterpiece. Uh, Diagonal, we have a lot of uh, great pieces available, which I heard Corey mention was one of the uh, Lebinsky's uh, favorite colors and master colors when he created work. And so that's a great thing to see when you see some of his work, if you want to go for the purest, pure form that the artist is going for at that time. But there's some other beautiful colors out there that whatever catches your eye. This was one of the pieces I was talking about that was blown by Stanislav in America. This one was obviously blown at Pilchuk. This was also from the Belkin collection. A rare example of, of uh, Lubinsky's in October, like Lubinsky's work that isn't cast. Great narrative, great story, different body of work, similar. Uh, another Lubinsky work from the secondary market, blown, just rare treasures uh, that we have uh, available at the gallery. Uh, free through, big, beautiful work that we have it in our secondary market. This work is in our uh, in Habitat vault we recently have opened and you're all welcome to come uh, visit the vault and explore the, uh, the back room as we call it now. And it, it is an amazing place to see. Um, this one isn't showing up for some reason. So I'm gonna skip that one. And we got uh, Blue Sky, uh, an interesting form. I've not seen too many like this. And just, just, just to show them exploring the skill required for this kind of glass. And I need uh, some help. I have a piece that I don't know the name of. So maybe someone could help us, family or friends. This large sculpture uh, that I got. Maybe that's Crater. Is it called a Crater? Like someone kept calling it something else. So it is a uh, beautiful. Uh, there is a similar uh, sculpture that is at the Ringling Museum on display that I believe was part of the Kotler collection. Um, but it's, it's, it's a very large, uh, large sculpture. Oh, gotcha. I might have another picture of this later that you mentioned that title at a different angle. That helps me a lot, Corey. Thank you. Um, taking off blue, you can see the piece that Charles has at the Fort Wayne Museum of Art in a different angle uh, from behind. So you can kind of see that. This is a very interesting piece called the Head 8990, uh, 27 inches tall, very unique, very rare that is on the, hopefully is on the secondary market. And we've seen a piece called Scream that came through the gallery, which had the mouth open, tilted back. This has the mouth closed, tilted back, and it looks like hair on the side. And this was the, the, mm. the work talking about what was going on in the country. Uh, Corey, you care to elaborate on that or Ferd? Well, I've, never, I've never seen one like this because most of them um, are not smiling. Most mm. of them, are, are, are filled with angst and frustration and, yeah. uh, you know, uh, screaming or yelling or, or that's the interpretation. This one actually has a really warm face and even the, the face itself, the interior uh, imagery is, is, is very soft. So I, I have never seen one like this before, but uh, it's definitely from that particular period of time and series. Mm -hmm. uh -huh. Thank you, Corey. So that green piece was indeed called Crater. Thank you so much. All right, um, continuing, we have a uh, metamorphosis sculpture. Uh, we had uh, one of these arrived to the gallery that was purchased on the glass, uh, glass tour, 2019, and another one's available. Beautiful, I've seen these in the gallery. They are just immense. And uh, Matt, it's just amazing what was accomplished by the artist. Uh, Table for a Bride, beautiful color in this piece, uh, some depth to it some real amazing talent. And I've seen one of these, I think in person, but I've never seen one in this color. And uh, I think that wraps up our presentation today. And I'm grateful for everybody joining me. And I want to show you this picture that uh, of Yaroslava waving goodbye. That I think uh, Hale and Myra Weiss provided uh, just saying goodbye to uh, an amazing legacy to both Stanislav, or uh, not goodbye, goodbye to them as they both have uh, passed, but in a, as their legacy continues on and we share in the honor of their memory. So I will stop sharing my little uh, presentation now and thank you all for, for joining me in this, in this celebration and something that's so different that we wanted to do, mm -hmm. celebrating 100 years. Wonderful. Yeah. Great, really a great presentation. Great thank job, Aaron. Yes, Corey. Thank you. Yes, Ferd, Corey, 
<laughs> it's a real honor to have the Levinsky family here. I just wanted to mention that. Um, a real honor. Thank yeah. you very much for helping participate in, in, our, in our exhibition, in our celebration of, of the Levinsky, Yaroslav, and the family. Do you know? We have somebody on here that was a student of Levinsky. Uh, Lynch, I'm going to mute everybody step real quick. Forward? You can't. Yeah, hi. Uh, I just wanted to uh, thank you for organizing this great celebration. And uh, also I wanted to add, because uh, we talked about how great the uh, artist he is and everything else, but uh, you didn't mention any of the uh, students and how many lives were influenced by mm -hmm. him as a professor. He was there for 25 years uh, as a professor in the Academy of Applied Arts in Prague. And um, I was one of the lucky ones uh, to be one of his students and uh, he changed my life. You know, I came from Bulgaria and there was no glass at all. I was studying ceramics and uh, went there and totally changed my life. And I'm so thankful. And since the moment that I met him, uh, it's like totally the light came through and it was unbelievable. The experience to be a student of his and uh, uh, he was an amazing uh, professor and uh, he was uh, he has his own uh, ideas of how to teach people and how to get the best out of them uh, and it was great you know he's always uh, uh, the best part was uh, it was five years six years program in the academy and uh, the best part was that he was almost every day present and we drew, uh, we had a life model every day and we drew for four hours from the morning from eight to 12. And then there was a critique. He always comes with the assistant and uh, he was uh, always very joyful. And sometimes was very critical uh, to me, he said a few times and to other people as well. Now this is tragedy, it's terrible. <laughs> You start again, you know, it just, uh, it was like that. And I was like, no, am I that bad? And then really I tried and I made it better. So he was able to push us, you know, to get the best of us. So I just want to add this to the, he was a great professor. There's so many great artists actually came from his teaching in the academy. He was an awesome man. Yeah. That's all I have to say. <laughs> Thank you for adding that, Achazar. It's an important story. There's so many different stories from so many different angles whose life uh, uh, Stanislav influenced. And uh, that was the side I didn't cover because I didn't have much on it. So I'm grateful, you know, for you, for you coming and joining and sharing us, sharing with us. Um, Can I ask you a question, Aaron? Sure. <clears throat> uh, actually to Harold and Myra, but also to Yaroslav, um, I find the work from uh, Richter Libensky to be very spiritual, especially some of these very large pieces that are in the in the beautiful. Uh, Sorry, guys, hold on. <laughs> that are in a beautiful uh, museum in Zalevs, and he brought. I've been uh, several times. I've met Yaroslav many times there, and. Um, I, I have tried to find some information about this. Do you know anything that you would be able to share here about uh, that sp a specific aspect of spirituality of their work? Uh, two, two things come to mind. Number one is that, um, so Stanislav suffered from uh, <clears throat> two different, two different uh, Cancer, like cancers uh, in, in his later years. Uh, one of them was lung cancer and the other one was colon cancer. So I had heard that some of the uh, vestment series that he did, uh, which you referenced, uh, were from inspired by visits to the doctors when they would throw up chest x-rays. Some of them indeed do look like that since we've seen our share of chest x-rays. Uh, 
the other uh, um, imprint of an angel, things like that, uh, I think indeed are sort of uh, end of life uh, pieces that uh, I, I agree with you. They, they, they do seem spiritual in that sense. Mm -hmm. Harold, can Thank you hear uh, Arlene and I? Yeah. yeah. Okay, we, we were having trouble with our sound before. We yeah. owned an uh, image of an angel, uh, of yeah. an angel, and my mother used to come in and look at the piece, a very large piece, and she would say, oh, you have my gravestone already <laughs> here. And uh, uh, I, we always uh, got a kick out of it. Her gravestone, is, unfortunately, she's passed, is very different. Um, I was unable to speak early on, on on the pictures that Aaron was kind enough to show. There was a blown and enameled piece yes. of school children. And that is a very, and I know Ferd is aware of this, a very historic piece because uh, Lubinsky was a glass blower long before he was a... Uh, uh, he, he worked in the other aspects of glass and uh, his series on um, what was it? Uh, the tapestry, uh, Bayou Tapestry. Yeah. Yes, the Bayou Tapestry series, which to me it was iconic in, in its beauty and its history to uh, Western civilization and was in the first English published book on Lubinsky Brocktova uh, stimulated Arlene and I to find this piece, uh, which comes from 1947 hmm. and was the style of work that he was doing at that time. Uh, I'm passed by, I've said more than I wanted to, but I did want that piece because of its historic nature uh, to be understood why we sent it here. Thank you. And thank you for a fantastic afternoon. Yeah. Yes. Thanks for joining, guys. That's great. I'd like to, I'd like to comment on that spirituality because, because Grandpa was very vocal about these imprints of angel investments, and he meant it as a, as a, as a testament. He was, in an interview in the, in the middle of the 90s, he said that he has this image of, of like his, final, his final say on what modern glass should look like. And he has an image of seven grand pieces that he still wants to make prior to his, his death. And these are the, the images of Angel and Vestments. So, so it's exactly like that. He, he wanted to say something special in them. Yeah. Mm. Thank you so yeah. much for sharing that. And, and also my father, Yaroslav, he said that Stanislav created these vestments not during the uh, diagnosis of illness, but immediately before. So maybe it was some, somehow really connected. Mm -hmm. So this is how, how he memorates it. <laughs> yeah, very interesting. It's, uh, intuition in a way. Well, uh, oh, yeah. this was- uh, I have a question also. Sure. Yeah, go ahead, Ali. Um, we have a uh, green eye of the pyramid, but you saw it has the big square behind it. And I always wondered why he put that big square behind um, the eye of the pyramid. And um, I know, how, excuse me, Hal and Myra, Myra, you said that you went to the pyramids. Oh, we, no? Heard that went, bad. You went walking? Kathy and Kathy went. Hampson. Yeah, Kathy, we did. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so I, I never understood why they made two different ways of looking at uh, the eye of the pyramid. Does anybody know? I never asked them that question, but it's, it's a good one. <laughs> it's one of my favorite yeah. pieces. Uh, my father will try to explain. <laughs> okay. okay. There was an uh, for Corning, there was one version only with two no, desks, two, two, two uh, panels. Tops. And then there was a second one, which was a little bit more. 
And then a udělají jen tu jednoduchou, co mají třeba vajzovi. Uh, simplify it and did only the with one, one spike. A the pak one udělali variantu Myra ještě. And then there was a version with, with, the death, with the desk. So three different variations. Uh, variations yes. Ono jako te možnosti tolik moc není, takže vlastně zkoušeli. Co? So they were trying and the one Myra and Dixon. They, ha- they have got the last mm-hmm. version, yes. Thank you. May I just ask, since I have the opportunity, Yarda, how are your family doing? You're, you're... No, my, my daughter. Hello, nice to see you. We are fine. And my father just received first first injection. Potom stá, zatím ne, nebo si nechci, si má, že máme geny, které jsou odolný vůči tomu. And my father, he has idea that no one from uh, grandmother's um, in, ancestors, Děti, yeah. children and grandchildren didn't have this illness, so he thinks they are um, protected. So there is some gene that <laughs> we are protected, but no. <laughs> but glad everyone is well. Yes. yes. And how are you? Yes. Good. We're fine. Thank you. Yes. We're looking forward to coming back. Yes. So someday nice. we, all look, we all look forward nice. to doing that for sure. Well, thank you everybody for joining today. And I hope you enjoyed your experience with me. And I look forward to seeing you next week. Uh, we will be visiting, I believe, uh, artist John Moran for the, the Not Grandma's Glass, which will be the last Zoom of the month due to the fact they have a baby due on April 8th, the baby boy. So ah, if you nice need to that. reach, thank you. If you need to reach me, you're welcome to try to email me. My, my staff will also be assisting. And we'll get back together again on April 24th or 5th for the ACG Talk, promoting Glass uh, 49. Uh, have a great weekend. And thank you again, everybody. Thank you to the members of La- Labinsky's family for joining us today. It was a true honor. And again, uh, I look forward to seeing you all soon and face-to-face. Be well. Thank you. Thank you. See you, everybody. Bye. Bye, Bye, Enjoy your weekend. Bye.